Hi, my name is Shannon. I work at Asana on our customer success team. I'm going to spend a couple of minutes walking through some of my favorite reporting functionality in Asana. I want to talk about both task level reporting, how you can get a sense of all of the things that have been completed, maybe all of the outstanding tasks that your team has assigned, but also some higher level project level reporting. For that, we'll use portfolios up here at the top left. Starting with task level reporting, one thing that I often hear customers ask for is for a way to see all of the tasks that their team has due soon across all of their projects. So right now we're drilled into a creative or team request project. We also have our event projects, some launch projects. This kind of adds up if your team is working on a lot of different projects, that's a lot of different places to go and check in. Rather than clicking into each of those projects, what I would recommend is that you go up here to the top where you see this search bar, click in, and then go to advanced search. What you can do from here is you can create a custom query that will synthesize information across all of the different projects. So let's say if I want to see Kristen, Nicola, Lily, the three folks on my team, I wanna see everything that these folks have assigned to them, regardless of the project. So I don't wanna to have to go and drill into each of these individually. So I'll keep this pretty broad. Let's see what they still have to do, maybe in the next month. I like setting this as a date range rather, or a 30 day range rather than a firm between X and Y date, so that the report will be more dynamic and you're not needing to rerun it. Any report that you create here is live data. So as the date shift, you will see anything that meets the updated search results. So let's click search and see what we get. Okay, we have a pretty big list of things. Right now it's kind of a laundry list of tasks. You can see the different assignees, dates, and these are the different projects that these tasks are a part of. The first thing I wanna do is create some sort of structure in this report. So I'm gonna sort it by assignee. I could also group it by project. So I'm gonna go back to assignee because I find this a good way to just get a sense of the work that people have outstanding and where I maybe need to jump in and see how we can provide some additional support. So you can see Kristen and Lily and Nicola all have a decent amount assigned to them, about 20 tasks. If you saw that Kristen maybe had five tasks and Nicola and Lily had more, you could actually reassign right from here to distribute the workload a bit better. I'm gonna go ahead and save this report by clicking here. And I'm gonna call this team to do's next 30 days. Again, this is live data, so if I create this as a report and save it, it will live over here in my report section, and I can just go and access this report. You can also share this report with whomever you'd like by just sharing the URL. The other report that I wanted to talk through was um, project level reporting. For this, we go to portfolios. So if I go to my portfolios over in the top left, I've already created a couple, so I'll walk through one that I've created. To create your own, you just go down to the bottom to create a portfolio. This is a way to group your projects. So I created this marketing and communications portfolio, and within it, each of my different projects are showing as a row here. You'll see kind of a high level status on projects, the way that you can set these is by going into the different, let's go into customer appreciation events. We can set a status here. If this is on track, I can make that as a note. Um, I can add a comment. I can add any additional context here. If I go back to my portfolio, you'll now see that the customer appreciation is green on track with my note here. The task progress is reflecting how many tasks have been complete and how many are still left to be done. Since these are pretty new projects, we haven't completed much yet. And then you can set dates for your projects as well as add additional fields like priority um, 
key stakeholders, line of business, any way that you would want to group this, you can do so here. And then you can even sort the same way we sorted our report, your portfolio into kind of those different buckets. The key things that I would recommend for leveraging portfolios is first making sure that the projects are built out. They have task assignees, they have due dates. Y'all are using the status update on the project. And second, that you add all your key projects to your portfolio. That way you'll see all of this information in one space and you can easily share this with folks. The other thing that you can do in your portfolio is get a sense of your team's workload. So if I click over to the workload tab, what you'll see here are a list of all of the folks who have tasks assigned to them. And these are people who have tasks assigned to them within the project. So if I click into Dave, you can see that Dave has a couple of tasks assigned in these different projects. These are single day tasks. So you'll see them with a the little mountain here. And this is giving you just a pure task count. Here's the different projects where his tasks live. If I go and look at Kristen, Kristen has a lot more on her plate. You can see the different projects and tasks assigned to her. The tasks with the longer bar are start and end dates, and those will give you a more accurate representation of the workload that Kristen actually has. Generally, I would recommend that you make sure all tasks have an assignee and a due date, but if you can put in a start date to give it a more accurate representation of how big the work is, that will be helpful for ha helping you better understand capacity. One last thing to note is that you can also add an effort here. This is where you do something like estimated hours to further refine the information that you're seeing in the portfolio.